It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Big thanks to all of you for checking out the series, especially for those who subscribe and listen every single week. we got the uh, the new episodes that go up every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Always appreciate you listening. Always appreciate the comments that you leave in the various places you can do so. Of course, if you're not a subscriber, now is a great time. Now, right now is a great time to do that. And, uh, and you can do so, of course, at any of the popular spots, including iTunes and Apple Podcast or Spotify. Uh, YouTube, Anchor, Stitcher, Podchaser, wherever you get your podcast from. Just type in Kyle Meredith with subscribe. We'll take care of the rest. It's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and learn about new ones. And uh, you really just know what's happening in the music world. So I do hope you hit that button and follow along. Uh, it really would mean the world to me, uh, which may not mean anything to you because you probably don't know me. But uh, but just know that somewhere out in the world, I'm feeling pretty grateful about the whole thing. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, I'm going to be talking with the band O1. Wonder. I've got Anthony and Josephine. Uh, well, in fact, I, they're at their studio. I'm in a closet here in Louisville, Kentucky, in my studio. But we've linked up to talk about uh, a bunch of things. Um, their brand new record that came out earlier this year called No One Else Can Wear Your Crown. And the unintended songs that they've been releasing since. I say unintended because, of course, when they were releasing the new record, they didn't know that a uh, worldwide pandemic was going to happen. But with the isolation at home in which they have their own studio in, they've been able to stay very productive uh, with new songs, which they're calling the Home Tape Series. So we're going to talk about that. In fact, we're going to talk about how this uh, this lifestyle, this uh, this isolation sort of uh, suits them in a way. They're normally bunkered down anyway. This isn't a, a complete lifestyle change for them. Uh, sort of similar, I will say, uh, for me as well. But all of this has, has lent an interesting thing to their songwriting, and that's immediate recording. They can write a song, they can turn right around and put it out in the world. You know, as opposed to what a lot of artists would do is if, you know, writing a song, maybe demoing it, putting it on the shelf, waiting for the time for the album to happen. Maybe by the time the public hears it, it's been around for two years. That's not really the case with what No Wonder is doing at the moment. We're going to hear about the first song that came out there with Lonely Star, how that speaks to isolation. And then we'll back it up. You know, we'll back it up to between their second and third record. Uh, to a time where they really started to feel a lot of burnout. Uh, this was one of the things that kind of put them home, to to take some isolation, as we say, before it was cool. It was a time, as they'll tell you, as you'll hear in this interview, that they needed to forget that they were even in a band. So I want to hear what that was about. And then to turn around and find some of the themes in the record, No One Else Can Wear Your Crown, especially empowerment. That shows up a lot in what Josephine is singing about, as well as recognizing success. She says that was important, a, a surprising actual theme. You know, when a band hits it, maybe they don't have all the time in the world to really, you know, to enjoy that moment. And she says that's that's really important that if it's something you've dreamt up for your entire life to really recognize when you've actually done it. So that's all in here and plenty more. Let's jump into it. Kyle Meredith with Oh Wonder. First, I, I want to compliment you on how much I love the record No One Else Can Wear Your Crown. Although I know you, things have already happened. Like, that's a 2020 record, but you're, we're already talking past that. I, we're going to talk plenty about the record, but I want to start with more current events because you've already announced sort of a new series called Home Tapes, right? Yes, which is um, entirely a response to obviously what's happening in the world right now with COVID-19 and, you know, all shows for the foreseeable future being cancelled and everybody being stuck in their houses. We were kind of wondering how we could help or what we could do and I guess music is the only thing we know how to do to comfort people. So, yeah, we've started a new project where we're going to basically write songs in response to what's going on, how we're feeling, record them in our home studio and put them online and share them with people. It, it seems like you all are like we're primed possibly for this moment right here. I mean, considering the backstory of, of what the last record was about really needing downtime, already being sort of accustomed to being at home and having your home studio. 
I mean, that, that really does put you kind of like in the perfect position for this record, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I guess it's like the equivalent to someone building like a war bunker in their garden. It's like <laughs> we have a music, musical war bunker. Yeah, it's weird because we, we built the studio knowing we'd make like at least one record in it. And then now it looks like we're going to be doing this home tapes project and another record. So it's definitely worth building for sure. Yeah, but even emotionally, I feel like we keep laughing. Like we've been in training for this for five years because... Like we normal a normal life for us is, or at least when we're not touring, is being stuck indoors with each other, working from home. We're, we're kind of we're pretty isolated anyway. It appears um, so. Kind of there's not been that much of an adjustment in terms of how we're operating. It's just we get more time to be creative and write songs. So um, I'm yeah, I feel insanely lucky to be able to say that. That for we sure. can still do our jobs. Yeah, and, it's yeah. Where, it's the yeah. biggest privilege. It's not a huge transition for us. Yeah, and and especially you know as you as you were talking about a lot of these songs being real-time reactions I think is how I took that that sounds like that's sort of maybe not in in the same way obviously but a holdover from what you were doing before because as I understand a lot of the recording of Crown I mean you're writing sort of as you were recording like it was all one big process it wasn't like a lot of artists do it like here's a song that I've written you know and I'm sitting on for the past two years and now it finally gets into the studio it makes it really really immediate yeah it, it, it is super immediate and I know the a kind of A and Ring process for us is just like is about ten minutes where we go cool this is good let's let's just record it <laughs> yeah um, which is really nice because it actually means that songs get the attention they deserve like really quickly and you don't have a chance to kind of second guess and things fall and fall out of love with them that's like you that's get demo itis thing, yeah. as well um, so yeah like loads of the vocals on the latest album were just the demo vocals because we you know we just wrote something recorded it and then couldn't beat that energy. And I guess this home tapes project is one step further in terms of capturing an energy of a feeling, recording it, and then being able to put it out into the world like a couple weeks later is honestly one of the most majestic feelings you can get because it feels like you're experiencing things and sharing and having conversations with other people in real time. It's like it's such a oh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's- yeah, in in a way, it's kind of it's got me thinking. Why would you do it any other way? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's like there's there's album campaigns and there's like building towards big singles or whatever that stuff is but but you're promoting it, songs you wrote two years ago yeah, yeah it just feels so it's different for everyone like I do, I've never understood how people say like this is a song I wrote eight years ago and I was now on my album and you're like I'm like how have you lived with that song for eight years and it still be applicable to you I can't get into that headspace but each to their own I guess well it's also I think a lot of artists you know once you put once you've written a record, I think people have the inclination to want to tinker with it and tinker with it and tinker with it. And and for you, like, how do you all let go of that? Because, like, here it is, two weeks, and it's out in the world. You know, how do you not two weeks later go, oh, you know, I really wish I'd rewritten this little section here? Yeah, that is true. I've um, never had that feeling. I haven't had that. I think because we do everything here, like, with the home tapes, we're mixing it as well. I've just got really used to committing, mm-hmm. and I think... As soon as you commit, there's just no looking back. Yeah. And as soon as, yeah, you just got to close doors behind you. As soon as you move on from ideas, you just have to be like, cool, that's it now. This is the vibe of this song. Or We have a lot of friends that are songwriters and want to release music. And they've been sat on songs for like genuinely like seven years. And they're still trying to get the the layering of this violin over that beat perfect and mix this tiny thing. And you're like... That's cool and everything, but <laughs> like art is there to be shared. Like art without a listener, music without a listener is is meaningless to me anyway. Um, I think that the, the, the listener gives it value and meaning. And so more important than getting it 100% is getting it out, even if it's at 80%, in my mind, I think. Yeah, I also think... That's the point of music. If you've gone with your gut and you've decided to do something, whether that's, you know, a vocal melody or a layer of a synth or something... Like you've probably put it there for a reason, so yeah. it might backfire and it <laughs> might sound absolutely terrible in the end. So we'll see. Well, the first song we've heard, it, I mean, it's it's great. Uh, Lonely Star, that that one arrived really quickly, and, and it is. It's such a beautiful song. Uh, go. Uh, I don't know if there's much to talk about that one because I feel like we are in real time. But what can you tell me about that? I guess the chorus. It, I'm a lonely star. Is there anybody out there? I guess this period is going to be super isolating for a lot of people. Um, And in the absence of being able to actually see others, I think I'm certainly feeling, I don't know what the word is, you just feel really at sea or like really unsettled. And I think we just wanted to write a song that reminded people that 
Like literally everyone in the world is going through this right now. And so all of your anxieties or, 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 or just fears or I don't know if you feel slightly unsettled like that, like everyone will be feeling that. Right. And yeah, so we just wrote it from kind of like the voyeuristic nature of being in a bar. Those are the days you could have a cocktail on a Thursday. Oh, um, I mean, we're still having cocktails on a Thursday. We're just inside our house. <laughs> um, but kind of watching other people and, and being jealous of, of them having something and or someone and actually we just wanted to write a song to be like nobody has anything together everybody's in this kind of very weird boat right now so you're cool don't worry is what that's about yeah yeah i was uh talking to my wife and my son and and especially my son he's he's 12 you know and he's got a decent grasp on the situation but it, it was telling him that mm-hmm. like you know if, if you're feeling weird about this just know that like nearly all 8 billion people on the planet are also feeling this you know at the same mm-hmm. time and it's what what weird unity that is mm, it's rare I it's don't weird. Think that... it must be weird for a kid as well because like they're at like every age or so different like the difference between your kid when he's 12 and 14 will be crazy so it must be I wonder what effect it will have on I was speaking to a guy in the park today he had a five year old um, at social distance I hasten to add <laughs> um, our dogs were playing we were like shouting at each other from metres away um <laughs> And he was saying like his five year old is now really good at social distancing and like will say like two meters, two meters if there's another kid that approaches him. And I just I found myself saying like, what happens if this lasts months and we raise a generation of children who are just like a little bit suspicious of humans right. proximity, yeah. and proximity and closeness. But then he countered it with, yeah, but we're talking in a park and we probably wouldn't have spoken three months ago because we're just in our on our phones and in our heads. But actually, we're craving like community and, and conversation and normality to a certain degree and he's like so actually my kid is observing me being kind to strangers it's all a kind of weird balance but um yeah i did wonder that if if there's going to be kids that are the covid generation right. <laughs> yeah. can't touch people I mean, what will the repercussions <laughs> be it's true intimacy. we don't we don't know what those sociological repercussions yeah we don't yeah, yeah. that's um yeah. it's uh interesting and scary uh, all at the same time mm. You know, sure. I, I will pull this into the record. No one else can wear your crown because a lot. You know, the press really is really honed in on the downtime being so important, and I think that's again what's interesting about the situation that you're in now, the opportunity that you're using at this moment because because you all had experienced a, a big degree of, of burnout to, if that's the right term, right? That that led you to kind mm-hmm. of isolating before isolating was even cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We were just thrust into this whirlwind of touring, I guess, was the, was the main thing. You know, we'd started making songs in our house and then found ourselves like on a two year world tour, um, having never played outside of England before. It was just like so insane and amazing and addictive that we just said yes to everything. And then when our label were like, cool, so can you guys also make a, you know, album number two? we kind of were like yeah sure we just kind of just crammed it in between two tours yeah just made an album in like two weeks and put it out and then toured that more and and i think it's really easy when you're excited about something to get caught up up in it and and lose respect for your own sanity and and mental health and emotional needs and i also think we just lost the i don't know because we're we've been in studios for so long i think like for years touring just seemed like this kind of amazing pinnacle that we'd never reach We're like oh, let's just keep doing that mm, it's like a golden i totally ticket. forgot that it was like a, a musician in a way because mm. on stage you're you're more of a not a robot but you're, you're playing the same songs every night you're not progressing there's no creation well yeah i mean there'll be plenty of musicians that disagree with that sentiment yeah. and obviously you're creating something unique in the moment but we it's, typically started our days with nothing and ended it with a song and we didn't have that yeah that's such a nice accomplishment i guess progression and i don't know your fingers play the same frets and keys every night. It's, it's like you get home in the studio and your your fingers are kind of bound by the songs that you've been playing mm, on tour. So, so you have to unravel them a little bit. So did you ever, I mean, um, you know, w- when you did pull back, uh, when you did go home, did you have to stop writing as well? Was there a break from that too? Or was that something that you naturally went straight back into? We actually, yeah, we did take a couple months off and just didn't write or do anything. We we kind of built the studio and, and did up our house. Um, to kind of nest, but yeah, we, we 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 ignored music for a bit, right? I think we had to. I think we needed to, yeah. Which I think we needed insane. to forget we're in a band for a minute. Yeah, because it can it becomes especially when you're a couple as well. Like it becomes your life. You live and breathe it, and you forget that there are other things going on. And also, like in the absence of 
time on your own or time with friends or I don't know just being normal for a minute there's no space for reflection either so even everything that was going on I don't think we either of us processed it we were just in it and like yeah okay cool we're playing this massive festival and now we're going to do this tv show in Brazil and you're like yeah of course we are you know and you come home and you're like sorry what did I just do and you, it's so weird <laughs> um and you just have these weird moments where like even now like some of the things just feel so they feel, it, it especially feel real. being in isolation now it's, it feels less I saw a video of us playing a festival yesterday I was like oh crap I like showed my dog I was like this is what we do <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't just sit at home yeah well, I know yeah. that, that's how a lot of records ended up being about songs. A lot of artists, you know, in, the, in those moments, especially those busy moments, you find that the, the record that comes out next is them about writing songs, which there are classic versions of that, you know, that, I, that I've loved. But, uh, but I guess, you know, pulling back on that, it, it sounds like it really did give you an opportunity to take extra stock of what was happening in the world I, I should bring up like empowerment shows up all over this record especially you know you get a song like hallelujah and the pressures on it like why did that theme end up so prominent uh, which might be an obvious question but uh, worth asking no well um i don't know if it is obvious it was pr probably a lot of my influence sorry anthony um mm -hmm. but i came home from tour and was like who am i what what def like who am i don't, i've just been defined by this band for like the last three or four years so i started having therapy which i'd had as a kid but kind of not for any length lengthy period of time and all of these feelings of like accomplishment but also like not deserving that success came up, which was really interesting. And I guess um, it was the first time in my life, in my in my twenties, where I was like, oh my gosh, I've actually done what I set out to do. And I think throughout my whole teens and, and early twenties, I had a lot of influence from my school and my parents who, you know, didn't have any touchstones or reference points for me, people that made it in music. So they were so fearful of it and were like, no, 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 go get a proper job, become a lawyer, something that will, you know, have a have a plan A. And I kind of listened to them for a bit. And then I met, met Anthony and ignored all of that and started this band. And I think it was just that year off after touring was I think the first time I'd, I'd, I kind of gave myself a pat on the back being like, wow, you actually did it in spite of everybody around you telling you not to and that you mm. weren't good enough. And I guess I I kind of channeled a lot of those feelings of anger, which then turned into like I, they were I don't know, difficult feelings like resentment. But then then realizing that actually what I've done is is insane. And 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 it was it's really like you struggle with it as well, like feeling successful. Mm. But I was really determined that both of us spent that year feeling like we'd done something good and and we deserved where we were at. And I guess that's why all the songs are like, or a lot of the songs are about like having respect for yourself mm -hmm. because I don't know it's one it's one thing achieving your dreams and it's another thing recognizing that you've achieved them I don't think the two always come hand in hand and I think that's the most like bitter shame because when you're a kid and you write something down in your notebook like one day I want to be a pop star you know go get it but like take a breath and realize that you've done it like that's yeah that's where the joy is actually right. it's not doing it it's realizing you've done it so I guess yeah, that's where a lot of those feelings came from. Yeah, so, you know, and, and, and I'll say it makes for a, a really beautiful record the whole way around. I, I do wonder, though, like, obviously, the rug was pulled out from a lot of artists' feet, uh, uh, you know, that were launching records uh, around this time. To not mm -hmm. properly go out there and live with this record on the road in, in whatever way that you had planned, and now that you've moved on, does does it seem like this record is further in the rear view than it might regularly now, now that you're working on this home tape series? Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely feels like the kid that, that didn't get too much attention. <laughs> <laughs> we gave more attention to the siblings. Um, yeah. But may, maybe that's what will make it special. And when we do get back out on the road and whenever that is, maybe the kind of the torment of waiting will mm. be, you know, valuable in a way and it'll have a bit more meaning when we play it live. Um, and it'll feel fresh because, damn, playing an album like 60 Nights in a Row, you certainly don't like it after that. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't listened to it since we made it, but um, I'm looking forward to playing it when we do get out there. Well, I, I love what you all do. And, and that's a great record. But, but you know, that this is the benefit that already we're hearing new songs. And I'm certainly enjoying that as well. I mean, if it's, you know, 
Lonely Star is any indication of what we're about to hear, uh, I'm on board with this. Uh, again, it's I, I love what you guys do. Thank you oh, so thank much you. for the music. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's Thanks. really kind. No problem. Uh, Josephine, Anthony, it's it's great talking to you both. Thanks again for doing this call. I, I so appreciate it, and hopefully it won't be too long before we actually do all see each other out in the world again. Oh, dreaming of the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much, dude, and stay safe. All right, you all too. Take care. Take care, man. Thank, right. you. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. My thanks to Josephine and Anthony again. Uh, the latest full-length album from Oh Wonder is called No One Else Can Wear Your Crown. And, of course, you can follow along with them on their socials, especially for these uh, home tapes series. And thanks to you as well for listening to the episode, for checking out the series. Uh, again, if you're not already a subscriber, I really do hope you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with everything that we're doing here. That includes your favorite artists. It gives you a chance to discover new ones and to know what's happening in the music world. Again, you can grab us at any of the popular spots that you get podcasts from, including iTunes and Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Anchor, Podchaser, Stitcher, NPR.org, wherever you get yours. Just type in Kyle Meredith with and subscribe. We'll take care of the rest with new interviews released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me at uh, just about any of the big social media spots, at Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition of Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. You've interviewed some insane people. Hey, I'm Jen, and I love horror movies. I'm Mikey. I'm dead inside, and I also love horror movies. And we really like to torture our friend Todd because he hates horror movies. That I do. And that's why they call me the horror virgin. <laughs> that's the only reason we call him that. That's I'm not, no it's, other it's, reasons at all. You not oh, at all. Lengy. Whatever. So every, <laughs> <laughs> every week we take him through the encyclopedia of horror, the good, the bad, the ridiculously Jack Frosts. <laughs> and then we make fun of it, more or less. Or explain its deceptive feminism. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the funny one. <laughs> Our episodes drop on Monday, so check us out.